Okay. I thought I'd talk a little bit about the difference between molding over something and molding into something. This is a plaster mold and um, it can be used uh, just like we would use this to put a, a slab in and make a plate. This you could put a slab in and make an oblong bowl. That's called a slump mold because the clay is going to slump into it. If you turned it over and you put your clay on the outside, then it's called a hump mold. <laughs> so hump mold, slump mold. I thought I would do um, a, a demo in just a minute of a hump mold. But first I thought I would go to Anne's question of making a square plate. So I rolled out a square and uh, this could be put over a square hump mold. As an alternate, however, you could just lift up these edges and put something under them. See how that, um, now I, all I have, I have a dowel here. I did disturb that edge a little bit as I put it up. I can roll the dowel in to determine how much of an edge I want, okay? And I could do that. Um, you could do it with pencils. This dowel is a little bit bigger than a pencil, but I could do that all the way around. Of course, I'm gonna have to pay some attention to the corners, but if I get my dowels in there, okay, there's a very light touch corner. I could make that uh, different. I'm going to go ahead and put it in on this side, a dowel, and try to scoot them in all in about the same. And that last side, you kind of need a dowel of the right length, which I don't have. Uh, so I'm going to finesse that by, um, oh, let's see, using something that's about the same size. So let's assume that goes all the way over. If you let your plate dry like this, basically you've got a plate with very slight corners. <clears throat> Just like we let the clay slump into the mold over here, you can pound it on the table. You can also take a gentle touch and make this go down to the board. Okay. You could make these corners uh, decorative. You could uh, do something like pushing them together or you could cut there and bring them together. A lot of different ways you can play around with making the corners, but this is really a simple way I want to smooth out that clay and now it's going to dry with the lip. So I wanted to show you that. Four dowels, one of them needs to be the right length. This is a hump mold that I wanted to use. Uh, it's, um, oh, it's a little bit bigger than what I'd like to work with, um, but it's gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and work with it. So I've got a slab that's about 13 inches by 13 inches. And uh, one side of this is a carving that I did many years ago. So I wanna get the imprint of that on the bottom of the plate I'm making. So I'm gonna try and center that mold Okay, and my clay is very dry, so I'm not going to be able to use a pony roller or anything like that. I might not be able to get a, enough pressure on here to get that impression anyway, but that's the idea. Okay, after you've gotten, you can peek and see if you have an impression. 
I kind of feel like I don't have one. No, I have a very mild one, so that'll work. Uh, because this is so big, I'm going to turn it by putting a board on top and use the sandwich method to turn that over. Take off the board that was on the bottom. And now I want to let this clay uh, go over the hump mold. I can press it. I can drop it. Dropping helps. Of course, you could roll it uh, with the rolling pin again or the pony roller, but you don't want to put a lot of pressure on those corners because the clay could come right, I mean, the, the mold could come right through the corner. So I'm going to assume that that's enough pressure. Get this centered on my board. Now this would be, I want this clay to come down to the board at this point because I'm going to cut it uh, one more time. It's just gotten a, an initial cut. So I'm going to push it down along all four sides. And this is really one of the reasons for using a hump mold because now I can have a lip on this tray. I can have it come out onto the board. I'm not using the hump mold for that. I'm using the board. But obviously this would be hard to do with a slump mold. So if I've got that down where I want it, okay, this is pretty much where I want it. Um, since it's such a big piece of clay, I had uh, used a shower squeegee to do my um, compressing. I might do that one more time. It would be a good time to put my name into it. But really, this is the time where I take my most narrow side, which is this side, and I've got, oh, a full finger um, of clay, so I would want to cut that all the way around. So I'm just going to lay my ruler on there and cut, take away the excess clay, and I would be ready to do the same over here. I would feel where it's, oh, about a finger's width. Put my ruler on there. Oops. And cut that excess clay off. Then at this point, I can determine if I want to do anything special with the corners. Um, I probably want to ease these uh, to be a little bit rounded, but we'll do have to do more of that after it dries. Okay. When you're making um, something that has a lip on it like this, you don't want it to come out at a 90 degree angle. The clay is going to, as, as it fires, it's going to get weak and it's going to go down towards the floor. So we want the clay to dry, not at a 90 degree angle, but a little bit uh, more of an angle. So that if it slumps down, it could actually change to a 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is put something underneath here. I think uh, several of these plates would be strong enough. So I'm going to lift up this is why it's on not only a board, but newspaper. It's an important point. <laughs> okay, so I'm actually going to put this, it uh, could be wood, it could be anything. I'm just going to put something um, under there that I want it to dry with this going down. Okay, so you can see this is now curling 
down. So the edge, let's see if you can see it, Woo! fell right off. Put that back up. Um, and since I've already have it halfway off, I'm going to make it closer to the board. Okay, makes it a little bit easier. Um, is this the corner you can see? And I believe this is the corner we've cut. Keep it on the board this time. And I'm just pushing it down so it is, it slopes. At, since this is upside down, it slopes towards the top of the plate. Okay, so now you've got, I've only done two sides, but you've got to play. And again, you might want to do something special with this corners, turn them up even more, cut them, do a triangle, do them rounded, however you want to do them. So that's um, basically a hump mold. Uh, a little bit about feet on a plate. Um, our other plates did not have feet, but it is nice to put a foot on a plate. Uh, sometimes it's nothing more than just taking a piece of clay and, um, you know, let's say that's a nice square, then that's the foot. And it just lifts it up a little bit. Another way to do it, and I'm going to show you on this original plate simply because it is, um, oh, well, yeah. Okay, the, where, the place that you want to have a foot is at the bottom of the wall. Look at how this has dried up already. It's able to stand up on its own. I would still leave these under here for support, but it's doing quite well with standing up on its own. Actually, I'm gonna take this one that didn't have the right size dowel and put the, a right size dowel under there so it can start to dry at the right amount of height as well. Okay, um, but this is the wall of this tray where the wall meets the bottom, right there, where the wall meets the bottom. And that's where the foot on the other side of the plate needs to be. If I were to measure that on this particular example, I would be at about six and a half, six and three quarters inches. So I'm measuring from here to here and that's about let's just say seven inches okay one foot that I could put on that would be a continuous foot uh, almost like a frame like you're making a picture frame so I take uh, one end of a strip and cut a 45 degree angle. I just love those 45 degree angles, as you know. Um, <laughs> and measure seven inches along that outside because that's where it's gonna fit on the outside of the pot. So there's seven inches. Do again my um, 45 degree angle going the same way. Sometimes it takes a little uh, moving it around. I'm going to keep this straight. Hope you can see that. Um, make that side straight. Cut this at 45 degrees. Do the same with four more, three more pieces of clay. I can use the top one as a mold now, I mean a template. Okay, if I have four of these, which I only happen to have two, but um, I can put them together like so. Let's say that one was going over there. 
and this one was the right length, which um, it's not. I, obviously, I don't have the right length, but this could be the foot of my pot. So I could connect these, but the whole thing, you know, just slightly. Um, the, all of this would go on the bottom of the pot. So it's not, the corner's not weak. It's going to get pressure this way, and you don't have to worry about those corners being weak like we have in, in some other construction. But this could be the foot that you would take that square pot and flip and score it onto. So that's a nice, uh, simple foot. Of course, it could be half, um, half as wide. I could take these and cut them in length this way and um, have that all ready to go for my other two walls. But I just wanted to show you that's, a, that's one kind of a picture frame foot, if you will, that would be, work well for a square plate. And that's all I wanted to show you on this video. Um, thanks for watching.